Ciao you in of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, yes I am all smiles today, because yesterday we were playing a game, today we are back for the post game live, the first one, the real first one, because yesterday it was absolutely not a friendly, it was a real game, where it was super important, super crucial to win, and also to convince, and we won, and that's the fantastic news, and partially we convinced, when I'm telling you partially, it's because we saw two different games, the first half and the second half, in today's video we will of course try to analyze Analyze what happened, what we did really well, I called the video or I give the title goals and ideas because we saw beautiful things but we have some things to improve. So if you didn't yet, please start the season with a maximum of likes on today's video. Don't forget also to subscribe to the video if you didn't yet, especially if you want to be up to date about everything regarding Juventus, this is the channel. We are ready to start? Yes, we are. And we open immediately Tutto Sport, and it's probably exaggerating with the title Juve da Sogno, a dream Juve. Was it really a dream Juve? Well, none of us were probably expecting the first half except of a few that were already telling you that the signs that we saw in that pre-season tournament in USA, but also the games that we played, the friendlies that we played in Italy, were already giving us some signs of improvements. We were not there yet, we were not able to do it for 90 minutes, but we saw some offensive patterns, we saw different movements, we saw a higher average block. Of course, when we are playing in friendly, you don't have that stress, you don't have the obligation to go for the three points. And our question was, will we see the Juve that we saw in the summer? Will we also see it in August when the games will be real? Especially after the words of Massimiliano Allegri that said, Great, fantastic, beautiful enthusiasm, but from next week, when he was speaking last week, the games will be important, they will be different because they will count and the stress level will be much higher. So we were questioning ourselves and we saw the first real game of yesterday. Attenzione, because I see a lot of people already, starting with eh, Juventus is in the run for the Scudetto, Juventus can win it all, Juventus can go all in, what we saw yesterday... Calma, it is the first game, we don't know yet at the moment how bad Udinese was and how great Juventus was, the same thing for the other game of Serie A, we don't know how great Frosinone was or how great Napoli was and this is counting for every single team in Serie A after one game only, it's just a test. Maybe we have to say that Gazzetta dello Sport is giving a much better realistic title in today's video with Gazzetta dello Sport, che bella signora, because yes it was a beautiful old lady, it was really a beautiful old lady. I told you in terms of prediction a few things about Serie A and Juventus, I told you that Lecce would do a beautiful Serie A after one game, they won yesterday against the, according to me, exaggerated, overrated Lazio, then I told you that Federico Chiesa would be the first one to score with Juventus, he waited not even two minutes to score his first goal of the season, I had zero doubt about that and what a goal. And what a goal! Not only the goal of Federico, but also from all the team, because immediately aggressive on the one that is taking the ball, carrying the ball from the opposition team. The team was super high immediately, showing that they want to revenge a really bad season in terms of results, in terms of some shame game. We remember Maccabi Haifa, we remember Monza, not once but twice. There are some games like that, the 5-1 loss against Napoli. Juventus wants to forget immediately about it and convincing on the field. And that first action of the game is already giving you an evidence of the behavior of a Juventus. High on the field, recuperating the ball, a Dusan Vlaovic that is going on the side to give that ball to Federico that is absolutely not hesitant because he has another leg. He is aware of what he can do and that goal will give him an extra confident boost if you are looking at the celebration, that sliding celebration that we were all missing, that is bringing us back to the tournament that they did in Italy, that Euro 2020, with this beautiful sliding celebration and going with his arm like that, well it was beautiful to see these images back. It's not over, it is not over, because Questa è la vera Juve is the title inside Gazzetta dello Sport, this is the real Juve, well I have my question marks, I really have my question marks, because what is the real Juve? Because we saw two Juve, you look at the average position of the first half, where we confirmed what we saw in the preseason, higher Juve, with five players in the opposition half, we are speaking about Chiesa, about Dusan, about Cambiaso, what a player. I'm going a bit without structure today, eh? because all the things are coming up in my mind, 
but Cambiaso, according to me, MVP, what he's doing in the moment that he's playing is just incredible. Something that is bringing fresh ideas, fresh way of playing, and then also praised by Max Allegri, that is giving him the most important praise for him, because he qualified him, he defined him as intelligent player and you know it huh? the weak spot of max allegri for intelligent players from the moment that you are intelligent according to him because what is intelligent for max but according from the moment that he's calling you intelligent you know that you did really well more than uh clinical more than skillful more than talent more than whatever when you are called intelligent that means that you did a really great game the movements of cambiazo on that left side with rabio with kiko chiesa with alexandro really involved yesterday were really beautiful fresh ideas for that juve but look at the high juventus and then you go towards the second half and here you see the average position of the subs on top of the one that stayed there for 90 minutes you see a much lower juventus with a western mckinney that entered and that at a certain moment was playing more as a right back than as a right winger that is not even his original position because we know that western mckinney is a midfielder we already saw him in that first spell of max allegri a bit more on the right side of the field yesterday instead of Sule, there is a western mckinney that is taking that position more defensively and then you see also all the other players that enter played much lower a juventus that is bringing us back in terms of behavior to the 22 23 season much lower giving the ball to atalanta uh, to atalanta to udinese waiting for the opposition half trying to manage but also risking behind and this is something that i personally didn't appreciate in second half of course, when you are winning 3-0, you don't go towards the statistics because they are a bit fake. You can analyze the first half statistic, but not the entire one because when you win 3-0 and you don't play anymore, well, that second half has been dominated by your opponents. So it's really difficult to have a complete and correct lecture of the game when you are winning 3-0 after 45 minutes. But that doesn't mean that we were doing well because in the second half, I agree that you need to breathe, especially when you have 30 degree in Friuli, in the Dacia Arena, super warm, first game of the season. You are not yet here in terms of physical condition, I understand, but you can't just refuse to play for 45 minutes. Look at the, again, average position, you see that we have a problem. And there are some things that we have to do better. Now, the question is from Corriere dello Sport, they are doing a statement. I will turn it into a question. They are saying Juve al max. Juve at the max. Also taking the name Max Allegri. But Juve at the max. Is this a Juve at the max? Well, it will not be enough. Because you can't play with two different faces. One that is incredible, beautiful in the first half. The movements that we saw. That goal of Kiko Chiesa. That header from Rabiot. That I told you I was not sure. If we would have immediately the same impact as last season. Look like for him. And that's a good news. Season 22-23 didn't stop because he was the best. He was the MVP of last season. And he continued with a fantastic game. Not only the goal, but also recuperating the ball, pass accuracy, being on the man, winning his duels. He, was, he had the second most duels on the game. A lot of them, he was able to win them. So precious. And seeing a Mac, a Rabiot that is again in physical condition for 90 minutes of the game is super precious because that was a question mark that we had a Juventus can they do better yes they can because if you are looking at where Juventus was playing at a certain moment of the game we were at 65 percent playing on the left side a bit in the middle and totally ignoring the right side of the field in total of the game 54 percent on the left only 22 on the right side and this is something that we have to improve otherwise we start to be predictable look at also the average position of both teams in the first half that huge big gap on the right side where i believe that we can be more dangerous why didn't it work well because probably timo wea first game with juventus first real game with juventus was probably paying attention a lot to the tactical request of paying attention on the back on the right side didn't go really high but also we we were absolutely not involving him in that first half so it's a player that we totally ignored yesterday he was not at his best we saw it and the sub of team OEA is Weston McKenney so that right side is to fix 
on the market, maybe I would not go for another striker. I would not go for Lukaku. I would probably not go for a Berardi that is playing, yes, on the right side, but much more offensively. But if we can find a sub for Timo, when he's not performing, the time that he needs to adapt to go all in in also official games, we have a sub that can also involve the game or make sure that we are not playing only on the left side. Because yesterday, okay, fantastic that we saw Alexandro much more involved into the game. He was the player that touched most balls. He touched uh, at, at the end of the first half 52 balls, much more even at the end of the game with a lot of precision. A guy that was involved everywhere because the pass matrix of Alexandro is just incredible. Every single player was looking for Alexandro to start or to dialogue with, to start forming these triangles because we saw a lot of communication with the triangle on the left side. But is Alexandro the player that you want to have as the most involved of your team? Probably not. So something that we have to do much better there. If you are speaking about uh, individualities well Tico Chiesa from the start like that is just fantastic a much more uh, striker Dusan Vlaovic without negative thoughts that fourth goal that he scored that was offside because of Ealing Jr is just the movement is the picture that we want to see from Dusan aggressive angry he wants to go on the ball and not waiting for the ball beautiful Cambiaso we already spoke for me MVP is offering alternatives and probably that's why Kostic didn't even play. Is he on the market or not? Well, big question mark because with that Cambiaso that not only is able to do what Kostic did last year, that means being there on the left side, but he's also able to offer alternatives, new ideas entering the field centrally, creating new tunnels also for Emiretti, for a Rabiot, for a Chiesa, for the players that wants to go into that space. So important player went on target once because we went four times on target, three goals. One time it was the one of Cambiaso that the goalkeeper saved. Clinical Juve. Can we speak about other players that I forgot? Yeah, I probably forgot. We will speak about them live this evening on the channel of Romeo Agresti in English. Then, okay, yesterday, 250th victory from Max Alleg that yesterday did really well and I also loved his post-game interview where he said the second half we played bad he didn't say I asked them to manage or no we played bad we were a bit shaky behind and if you are looking you remember how many times I told you why did Gatti not play yesterday because we wanted to give a bit of stability being a bit sure that on the right side we were not offering with Timo Weah up front well it was Alexandre that went up on the left with Danilo paying attention on the right but still we were shaky and why were we shaky also because yesterday Locatelli that played according to me a beautiful game he didn't do the movement of dropping back a lot of time look at this position usually in the summer we were checking a Locatelli coming back a lot of time yesterday he didn't he tried to play also for him a bit higher on the field of course easier when you are scoring immediately after one minute and after a few minutes you score the second one he said another important thing he said Chiesa according to me is a striker and he needs to score 16 goals confirmed also by Federico Chies that said I'm getting used to that new role so all the discussion that we had in the last few weeks about Federico Chies is a winger is not a second striker he can't play in that 3-5-2 well confirmed by Max Allegri confirmed by Federico Chies is something that we can see beautifully and not it's not a casualty that I told you in my prediction that I see even and probably is a bit too early but I see a Federico Chies that could potentially be the top scorer of Juventus. Max said something else. He spoke about the hair of Yildiz, saying yesterday that uh, he told him to cut his hair, to go to the uh, hairdresser, to the barber. Why? Because he said, I saw him touching his hair for 100 minutes. He's probably losing a bit of concentration for that, so I'm asking him a new haircut. He already asked it to Sule, and Sule did it only one day after. Will we see a new haircut of Yildiz? Big question mark. I believe that... Uh, since Max saw me on Twitch Juve, he decided that I have the most beautiful hair on the on the world and everyone needs to copy me. Ragazzi, did we forget about something? Did we forget about something? I don't believe so. I think that we spoke about uh, the Max that we could speak about today. 
maybe the feeling about Juventini being happy. Yesterday, we were with a lot. Even if we had a disaster season, even if a lot of people were saying, if Max will be there, I will not watch Juve anymore. If this, then I will not watch Juve. I will not watch Juve until blah, 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 blah. Because we were in that negative loop. I saw a lot of Juventini watching Juve. I saw a lot of Juventini being proud of that first half. It's just the beginning. Let's try to keep that momentum high. And that means that from Tuesday, when Juventus will be back in the training center of La Continassa, they need to have one objective, going on Bologna, replicating that first half and probably even increase the minutes that we played well not only 45 but even more than 45 and bologna will be an important test i'm really curious to see how they will play today against milan ragazzi that was it for me don't forget maximum of likes subscribe to the channel grazie forza juve